am designer Richie. I'm a Shapeways crew member and owner of the uh, sh um, Stinger Designs shop at Shapeways. And I've been wanting to do this video for a while. One of my favorite materials to work with is strong, flexible plastics. So I wanted to do a little experiment with it because I absolutely love working with um, the interlocking parts that strong and flexible plastics allow. Some examples of this that can be seen on my shop, probably the most popular is the, the rock crawler, which comes fully assembled with rotating wheels. There are even sway bars, so all these different parts that lock together and keep, keep the piece going. So then I just got another one in orange. Another example is um, the woven bracelet. It's woven just like a, a basket would be with different different parts that don't touch so you can get some flex and move. Another example that I've been working on which is not finished is my ping pong launcher which has a lot of moving parts but this one seemed to have some mistakes with the way the parts went. So I wanted to make this video to show um, just how close can you get with interlocking parts. So with strong and flexible plastic, you can actually make two different parts that are interwoven, and as long as they don't touch each other, they, they won't be fused together. So if you wanted to make like a ring, for example, and another ring that fits inside of it, they can be printed together like that and be able to move around. You just need to make sure that you have enough clearance between the parts. So I actually printed out on the Shapeways website, the design guidelines for strong and flexible plastic under the clearance section. It says clearance is the space between any two parts, walls, or wires. Um, and then it talks about how with the selective lasering process, you can actually use the nylon powder to create these different parts. It says to ensure success, make the clearance between the parts, walls, and wires greater than the indicated minimum. The indicated minimum that they give us is 0.5 millimeters of clearance, but then they also give an accuracy value that says 0.15 millimeters, then 0.51% of the longest axis. So even if you do go to 0.5 millimeters, for example, like on these parts that I have right here, you're going to have an accuracy of 0.1, so that might move it up to 0.6 or 0.4, depending on how, how the uh, um, model is printed. So in this example I made three wheels and they are all the exact same except for the clearance between the wheel itself and the um, the axle that it's on is different. So this is 0 0.7 millimeters of clearance, 0 0.6, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, and 0.3 and I, I printed them all out just to see the difference. How much of a difference does it make between 0.3 and 0.4 and, and so on. So for example 0.7 millimeters you can see right here you got some some looseness in there and it wiggles around a bit and when this part came in the mail right out of the package the wheel was able to spin successfully without any problems whatsoever it was very loose and it worked very well now 0.6 it is the same clearance that I used on my rock crawler and someone that purchased the rock crawler was actually telling me that when they got theirs in the mail, the, the wheels did not spin on theirs, which I thought was very interesting. And they said that after a couple of days wondering why their wheels didn't spin, they just kind of played with them for a little bit and they had to loosen it up and there was some loose powder in there that had to be shaken out. And then after that, it was just fine. And so that's actually what happened to this wheel right here when I got it in the mail, this uh, 0.6 millimeter clearance. It didn't move, but you could tell that it had a little bit of looseness in it. So I played with it a bit. And as you can see now, it spins, it spins just fine. It's got a little bit of wiggle in it, but that, that works. Then we got 0.5 right here. Now this one actually does not move, even though the, um, the website does say 0.5. It may be for different reasons, just because of the length of it. There's so much powder in there that it can't get out. And I'm actually going to try and move it right now to see if if it will break first or if it will actually start to move. Oh, there you go. It actually works right there, 0.5. So when I first got it in the mail, it looked like it was going to break, but now at 0.5, it 
you we can see that there is some wheel spin without any problem right there. And you got 0.4 millimeters and this it there's no give at all. It doesn't even look like it. Oh, maybe I can force it. Oh, I actually forced it to go. But I would not recommend this because it would probably break or bend the material right there. So especially if you are making a model that will be for sale, um, that you're going to put up on your shop for other people to buy, I would definitely not recommend 0.4, especially with the accuracy of, of uh, 0.1 millimeters. You, you never know how it might turn out. You might have a good print um, one time and then another time it might not work out very well. So if you're putting something for sale online, depending on the part, I would definitely 6 and 7 you're fine with. 0.5, depending on how the shape of it is, it, it might vary. You might have to do some practicing first. And then 0.3 right here, this one has absolutely no space in between. It is just stuck together. If you're doing parts for yourself, you're not planning on selling these to someone else, you might be able to get away with a clearance this small, knowing that you yourself might break the part. But I got it to spin a little bit, but by doing it, I've kind of bent the material. The, uh, yeah, I bent it, but I got it to somewhat turn. So it is possible, but not recommended. Shapeways does recommend at 0.5, and as we can see with 0.5, with this, it took a while, but it worked. So, using that, you may be able to make some pretty cool interlocking parts, gears, mechanisms, things like that. You need to be really careful because I followed the guidelines when I was making this device right here, but there are parts completely fused together that will not come out. So. If you're going below with the design guidelines side, say you're taking a big risk. So you can check out some of my materials at the Stinger Design Prints shop at Shapeways. And good luck with everything you guys are making.